The surface anatomy of the neck is fairly straightforward in that most of the structures that can easily be palpated or felt lie approximately in the midline. One exception is a large muscle that cuts diagonally across the neck, the sternocleidomastoid muscle. And this is a great landmark muscle for physicians who may be trying to feel enlarged lymph nodes along this diagonally oriented muscle or looking potentially uh, for a pulse in the carotid vessels just deep to this muscle. Now the sternocleidomastoid is named due to its sites of muscular attachment. Inferiorly, it is going to attach to both the sternum and the clavicle, particularly the sternal end of the clavicle, which is towards the midline of the body. Between the two sternal ends, there's a small depression known as the jugular notch, which is just superior to the manubrium of the sternum. So if we begin by palpating the bony skeletal landmarks of the manubrium and the medial or sternal end of the clavicle, you can start to ascend diagonally up through the neck along the sternocleidomastoid muscle. Now superiorly, the other portion of this muscle gets its name due to the large bony prominence posterior to our ear of the temporal bone, known as the mastoid process. So sternocleido gets its name from sternum and clavicle and mastoid from the mastoid process. Along the midline of the neck itself, we're now going to use a landmark that is more prominent in males than females. And this is the laryngeal prominence, otherwise known as the Adam's apple. And we can more readily see this if I fade a portion of the skin on the right side of the neck. Now here we can see the extension of the cartilaginous tissue right in the midline of the neck. This is the thyroid cartilage. And with puberty, a secondary sex characteristic of males, is that this starts to become more elongated and pronounced and project more anteriorly, which will help to deepen the voice and the vocal cords get longer. Now the laryngeal prominence is a midline structure that can be used as a landmark. If we move superiorly towards the angle between the jaw and the neck, you can often palpate the mobile hyoid bone just deep to the skin. Inferior to the laryngeal prominence, we can palpate the next piece of cartilage, which is the cricoid cartilage. And between the cricoid, the more inferior piece of cartilage, and the thyroid cartilage, we have the cricothyroid ligament. And this is an excellent point for an emergency uh, individual responder to be able to do a tracheotomy in an emergency situation where they may need to open up the airway. And this is a safe place to perform this procedure where they will be able to palpate with their thumb or a finger the laryngeal prominence, move inferiorly and fill a small gap between the cricoid and thyroid cartilages. And here is where they would insert a knife or a small uh, scalpel to be able to open up the airway to ensure that the individual can breathe and get air into their lungs.